Charisma and welcome to today's video. This video is the first video based on the UCAT exam for this year and we hope you find it useful. In today's video, as we promised, we're going to be interviewing someone who scored in the 99th percentile in their UCAT exam back in 2019 and we're going to be answering all the questions you sent us on your Instagram. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We post weekly videos to help you get into medical school and ace your application. So without further ado, let's give you a quick introduction to the UCAT exam. So the UCAT exam or the university's clinical aptitude test is a two-hour computer-based exam that most students will have to take in order to get into medical schools in the UK. Now it's worthwhile to spend some time researching what medical schools need the UCAT as some require the BMAT instead and some don't require either test. Now the UCAT is made up of different sections but the key takeaway here as the name suggests is that this is an aptitude test. It's not a knowledge-based test where they're testing you on biology and chemistry and A-levels, for example, but rather it tests your aptitude, your skills. Are you skillful enough to be a good medical student and a good professional doctor? And are you good enough to stay in the career for your entire life? These are the kinds of things that they're testing through the UCAT exam. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are five sections to the UCAT exam that will be listed here. The first section is verbal reasoning, and this tests your comprehension skills. The second section is the decision-making section, and as the name suggests, it assesses your ability to make decisions. And this is in response to both text and numerical data sets. The third section is the quantitative reasoning section and that assesses your math skills because calculations, especially with regards to dosages, are a key component of being a junior doctor. The fourth section is the abstract reasoning section which assesses your ability to spot patterns and ignore irrelevant information. And the last section is the situational judgment section and that assesses your ability to be a professional and it assesses your professionalism, your behaviour and the kind of decisions you would make in ethical scenarios for example. Each section is scored between 300 and 900, except for the situational judgment section, which is assessed using bands, bands one through four, with band one being the best. This means you get a score out of 3,600 and you get a score for your situational judgment test. The UCAT does offer extra time to students who have a medical condition or a learning disability, so make sure to check it out if that's something that you think you might require. There's more information on their website. Now, booking opens on the 20th of June, and the actual UCAT exam dates span from the 11th of July to the 29th of September, so make sure to log on on the 20th of June and get the date that you prefer. You can only set this exam once in the entire year, so make sure to set a date where you feel that you would be prepared enough for the exam. The test normally costs £75 if you're taking it within the UK and £120 if you're taking it outside of the UK, but bursaries are available and more information on that is on their website, so make sure to check that out if a bursary is something that you're interested in. Well, that's it for our introduction to the UCAT. Moving on to the next section of the video where we answer your questions. So a bit of introduction, as you guys know, I'm a risk man, I'm a second year medic at King's and I gave my UCAT exam in the summer of 2019 and started med school in September of 2020 and I scored in the 99th percentile uh, in my UCAT exam so I got a total score of 3080 and I got a band 2 in situational judgement um, and I will be answering all the questions you've sent us today. So the first question that we got is what was your score breakdown? So I got a total of a 3080 and I got a 700 in verbal reasoning, a 750 in decision making, an 800 in quantitative reasoning and an 830 in abstract reasoning and I got a band 2 in situational judgement. So the next question is, what unis did you get into with your UCAT score? So I applied to Oxford, but that was a BMAT school. And then apart from that, I um, applied to Kings, Manchester and Liverpool for medicine. Um, and I got interview calls from all of them. And then I ended up getting a final offer from both Kings and Liverpool. Our next question is, how on earth did you do that? Well, I hope this video is useful and helps you achieve this score as well. But essentially, the most important things are consistency with UCAT preparation um, and just lots and lots of practice because, as I mentioned before, it's an aptitude test. There's not much knowledge that you need to learn. There's not much studying that you need to do. It's more just about practice, under timed conditions, and those were the main things that helped me, I would say. 
so this one's a really popular question how long did you prepare for the exam um as i mentioned before there's no real studying required for the exam because it's an aptitude test i don't know if i can put a number to it because the amount of time i dedicated to preparation changed every week so i would say around april i started looking into the ucat and um I did all my studying and I started doing some practice questions but they were never timed and I would spend like a couple hours a week um, just like on the weekend doing some UCAT work but I was you know drowned with work for my school so I didn't really dedicate a lot of time to the UCAT but then once my exams got over I think mid-June it was um, I dedicated lots of time to the UCAT and I booked my UCAT test date for the middle of August. Um, I don't think you need more than six weeks of intense preparation just because because um, I think we've mentioned this in some of our videos as well, because it's an aptitude test, kind of the only thing that you're working towards is one, improving your speed, and there's only so much that you can do, and two, avoiding silly mistakes. Um, and again, once you've kind of avoided those, there's nothing much else that you can do. And so after six weeks, you're gonna kind of see that you're scoring around the same level because you've made all the corrections that you possibly could, you've practiced enough. And unfortunately, there just aren't more practice resources available. Like you would probably finish them all in six weeks. So I would say six weeks of good intense preparation. Um, it should be good enough, I would say. So our next two questions are, what resources and materials did you use to prepare? So um, first of all, the best resource out there would definitely be the UCAT website's free tests. So I think they have three mock tests and then two question banks per section. So I did all of those because that is the most authentic practice questions that you can get because they're from the UCAT website themselves and you can do them untimed and then timed. Also, because the UCAT is an aptitude test, there's no way you're going to learn the answers up. So you can do the same mocks over and over again. Then you can also just search up like on Google UCAT resources and you'll find some other free stuff. But I also subscribe to Medify. And Medify is um, a UCAT preparation website, I would say. They have, I think, around eight mock tests, like timed mock tests, and then lots of individual question banks based on the sections as well. So that was quite useful. I would say that it wasn't an authentic representation of what the UCAT exam is like. So sometimes I found that the questions were way easier and sometimes the questions were way harder. Um, so although it wasn't an accurate depiction, I think it was useful because I got a lot of practice in. Um, and that was my main way of preparing, just doing practice questions um, and learning from my mistakes. So I think Medify was really useful in that way. Our next question is how many full practice tests did you do? So I did the eight on Medify as well as the three on the UCAT website. So that's 11 practice tests. So our next question is what was the most useful revision strategy for learning how to do the questions? So my most useful strategy, I would say, was learning from my mistakes. And I know that sounds cliche, but being very systematic with learning from your mistakes, identifying what went wrong, I think is key. So I had a little Excel sheet, which I might put up on the screen right now. And I would keep track of all the mocks and questions that I did. And then I would say what my score was. Have I gone up from the last time? Have I gone down or am I kind of in the same range? And then I would analyze why I got questions wrong. So I would broadly divide them into two different categories one being i guessed the answer so that's why it was wrong and i would guess the answer because i didn't have enough time to finish the section um and so if it was a case of me guessing and therefore getting the answer wrong that is an issue of timing so i need to improve my speed and the other category of why i would get questions wrong is that my concepts were bad and then apply strategies for each of the individual types of mistakes. So if it was a timing issue, I just need to practice more. If it was more of a conceptual issue, looking into why I got the question wrong, what was the explanation on Medify or the UCAT website, um, and making note of that in a notebook or on your iPad or whatever it is, so that you don't make that mistake again. So next are the more section specific questions that we got. So our first question is, I really struggle with the abstract reasoning section. Could you give me some tips? So coincidentally, I also really struggled with the abstract reasoning section, which you may not have known because that was the section that I ended up scoring the highest in and 
there was a very clear strategy that I implemented. So when I started doing the UCAT, for the abstract reasoning section, I was scoring in the 500s. Um, and so with abstract reasoning, the main aim of it is to find patterns in those shapes and to ignore irrelevant information. Um, and they have lots of common patterns. So there's lots of mnemonics that you can use to remember what types of patterns there are. So like shape, size, position, so on. And we will go into detail about these mnemonics in our special abstract reasoning video, which will go up in the future. But using those mnemonics, one helped me. And secondly, making a list of every single pattern that I came across. Because I had a list of patterns that I would occasionally go through, it helped my mind think in that kind of way where I was identifying patterns. And I know what kind of patterns already exist. So thinking like that and training my mind in that way really helped. Um, also another benefit of doing that is that the UCAT often repeats patterns so if you know most of the patterns that have already shown up they're bound to be some repetitions and then you can identify the pattern more easily and that really really worked because I ended up getting an 830 and that was my highest scoring section um, so that would be my tips for abstract reasoning. So the next question is how did you tackle the verbal reasoning section? So as I mentioned before the verbal reasoning section is all about testing your comprehension skills and and making you do this in a very high stress situation because you have such little time to go through all of the passages and then the questions. So my first tip, as I mentioned before, is downloading the Chrome extension Spread um, because it'll help improve your reading time. Next, I think it's also useful to read the questions first and then when you read that statement in the passage, you know exactly what you're looking for and you can answer the question. Um, that works out for a lot of people as well. But of course, remember that these are my tips and stuff that worked out for me and it may not work for you. So just keep that in mind so another strategy that i implemented was again using my excel sheet and so i was trying to see which questions i was worse off at and my strategy was that if i'm worse at for example the true false can't tell type questions i know i'm bad at them i will try to improve on them but at the end of the day, in the exam, I know I'm really bad at the true, false, can't tell questions, so I'll skip those first. I know I get 90% of the answers correct in the inference type questions, so let me finish all the inference type questions. I'm fairly certain I'm going to get 90% of them correct, and then come to the true and false questions, you know, because you know you can't finish all of the questions, so selectively do the questions that you're good at and skip the questions that you know you may not do as well in or questions that are really hard because remember harder questions aren't weighted more in the UCAT so use this to your advantage finish all the easy questions first finish all the questions that you're good at first and then move to the hard stuff so our next question is strategies for finding the answer in the QR section so the quantitative reasoning section so for the QR section I would say even though you have a calculator practice your mental math because bringing up the calculator and typing on that like chunky keyboard is hard and takes time and if you can do it mentally also lots of times you get like decimals and stuff um and sometimes it's useful to just estimate and round off the numbers and then do the calculation because obviously multiplying whole numbers is easier than multiplying decimals i think this next question is a really nice question to end on and it says i have really bad test anxiety did you face the same thing and how did you tackle it? So yeah, I have test anxiety as well. Um, I don't know how bad yours is, but definitely the UCAT, any exam comes with a lot of stress and anxiety. And I completely understand that. The fact that you can take this exam only once per year means that everything is kind of riding on it. And that puts a lot of stress on someone. So the way how I kind of tackled it is one, I practiced a lot, as I said, and practicing a lot meant that before the exam, I knew that I had exhausted every resource I had and there was literally nothing else that I could have done. Um, I also did not revise the day of the UCAT exam. I was just calm, chill, had a nice breakfast. So also choose an exam time that's convenient for you. So I did my exam in my summer vacation and obviously I was waking up much later during my summer vacation. So I didn't force myself to do it early in the morning because I simply would not be awake at that time. And even if I was, I would be so groggy and just not focused. And then also knowing that the UCAT isn't everything. Um, there are lots of universities which don't weigh up the UCAT as much. They focus more on your personal statement, for example. And there are universities that will accept you regardless of your UCAT score. There are universities which obviously need a higher UCAT score, but there are also universities which accept medium and low UCAT scores. Then there are universities which don't need the UCAT at all. And then worst case scenario, I could just do the BMAT and apply to the BMAT universities. So knowing that this wasn't the end of things and I still had lots of options available was also very calming. 
So I hope this video has been useful. That's all the questions we're going to be answering today. If you have any more questions, make sure to leave them down as a comment and stay tuned for our next video where we go through each of the UCAP sections in detail and give you tips.